uh, Craig Foss. Uh, thank you, Mr Speaker. A previous Labor speaker said that they were going backwards under this national government. He's right. The Labor Party are definitely going backwards under this national government. Their first speaker up, who incidentally had a lot to say on the bill, but I can't see his name mentioned as one of those that sat down in the committee of this particular bill um, as we heard submissions. Just for the record, Mr Speaker, um, yes, we did hear submissions. Every submitter that wanted to be heard was heard, Mr Speaker. And yes, a previous speaker talked that there were only eight, but he failed to mention the fact that number one submitter was the Board of Airline Representatives of New Zealand, i.e., and number two, the New Zealand Airports Association. So, in fact, all airlines that operate in New Zealand, all airports that operate in New Zealand, were represented, spoke to, uh, rep, uh, gave submissions to on, the, on this particular bill and on top of ongoing consultations that had gone for, on for quite some time, Mr Speaker. So, yes, maybe because they cannot count correctly or something, it's perhaps why the Labour opposition is going backwards under this national government. Mr Speaker, this bill gives clarity to airports and fairness and certainty to those that may want to re-enter or start up as international airports. And on that note, Mr Speaker, I have to note the concerns I raised are about the Hawke's Bay Airport, or Napier Airport as some may call it. It's currently undergoing an extension thanks to the hard work of the local hard-working MPs, Mr Tremaine and one other humble MP from Tuki Tuki, Mr Speaker. But one day, in fact, that airport may become international, but at the very least, um, right now, it will be soon be jet-capable, Mr Speaker. And interestingly, the debate moved on to perhaps if New Zealand and Australia becomes one domestic air market, then discussions around the international flights in or out of potentially Hawke's Bay become irrelevant because actually it ought to be a domestic airport and other um, legislation and regulation will deal with such matters, Mr Speaker. But I congratulate Mr Tremaine and his hard-working colleague on their successes so far in the Bay. The northern extension of the airport has now happened. The southern extension should be open sometime in June. And on that note, it will be very interesting to see that first carton of Hawke's Bay apples out fresh from Hawke's Bay on a flight to Wellington or Auckland, fresh into Australia, all again due to the hard work of many people in Hawke's Bay, as well as the two somewhat humble MPs there that have been working on Australian Apple access for quite some time. Mr Speaker, uh, excuse me, Mr Speaker, I commend the bill to the House. Members, the question is that the motion be agreed to. Those of that opinion will say aye. Aye. To the contrary, no. The ayes have it. Airports, cost recovery for processing of international travellers bill, second reading. This bill is set down for committee stage next sitting day. Chris Tremaine. Point of order, Mr Speaker. Uh, Mr Speaker, the House has made excellent progress tonight. Can I seek leave of the House for the House to rise early, returning tomorrow at 2pm? Leave is sought for that purpose. Is there any objection? There is no objection. The House stands adjourned until 2pm tomorrow.